Okie dokie, spody okies, welcome back. It's a good day to be using Dialogic and Godot to make... Did I say Dialogic? I sure did. I told you I've messed that up at least once. It's a good day to be using Dialogic and Godot to make a visual novel. So, last time, we got this far. It works. It functions. You can put that on itch.io. It just looks like trash. I hate it. I don't... This is me being so particular, but I just hate the text box that it comes with. And it's all black. There's. It's not really that hateable, but I do hate it. So we're going to change it. First thing we're going to do is going to come into styles. Oh, I've not set up any styles yet. Uh, well, I'm going to come over here and click the plus sign. I'm going to click the pre-made. And it's got a couple of different. Remember when I told you this could be used for narrative games? Here you go. There, There's your JRPG thing. But we're making a visual novel. So I'm going to pick out a visual novel style. Oh, and I should probably hit use instead of close. Got it. I need to put this somewhere. I'm going to make myself a folder called styles, I think. And we'll just call it new style. Godot will already add the T-R-E-S to it. And so Dialogic works on layers. And these are all the layers it's running when it runs that little black um, text box. It runs a background. Five portraits tells Dialogic where to put the portrait. We'll deal with that later. Input catcher, if you're familiar with Godot, it's just like who gets the click. Visual novel text box. Oh man, that sounds like something we'd want to alter. So you can change any of this. I'm interested in changing the box itself. And when you come to panel, oh, doesn't that look like it actually is? Let's see if I can find this in the editor and show you. This is just a regular old Godot style box. See, it's got the style box icon, and when I come over here, it's white, but it's getting colored black. Let's just make our own. I'm going to right-click over here in the file system, just in a blank space. New resource. Style box texture. Uh, yeah, let's put it in styles. Okay. I've off camera, I made a folder called assets. I will have this in an asset folder. Check the description and you can download this too. Or you can make your own if that's what you want. Or you can download one that's nicer. This is just one I made, but it says ninepatch.png. Some of you may know how to handle nine patches in Godot. Some of you may not. That's okay. That's what I'm here for. I'm going to drag it into the texture slot over here in Stylebox Texture. And to get this to look right, since I made it, I know that all the way around, all of the texture margins are 24 pixels. Looks pretty good, doesn't it? So now we can just replace this with this. What did we call this? It's in assets, isn't it? Nope, oh, it's in styles. New stylebox texture dot T-R-E-S. Drag it in, drop it. Save. Godot's going to fuss at us because we don't technically have a scene, but it's still saved, so that's fine. Test style. And it looks the same. I saw a lot of people online talking about this bug, and I've figured it out. Are you ready? To get this to work, restart Godot. I'll see you in a second. Hold tight. All right, so we've got it, and we test it, and we've restarted, and it still doesn't work. I'm not sure why this is the answer, but here we go. You have to turn off global, and custom has to be set to white with a full alpha. Everybody's 255. When we do that, save. Godot fusses. Guess what? I fuss back. Test style. Now it works. I don't know, man. I'm just happy to be here. It looks a little small, so I'm going to resize it. In in my testing, I really liked... Ooh, not 8,000. 800 by 200. 
see what we got. Yeah, I think that looks a little more sensical. Mm, you know, I'm actually going to leave the font alone, but if you want to change the font, you can just load a normal Godot um, font resource or a TTF file in there, and it, it understands that. There's also, yeah, see indicator? When it says indicator, it means do, 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 this thingy. You can actually change that to a custom indicator. I might if I get a bee in my bonnet, but right now I'm going to leave it alone. It's got a couple of other animations, too, if you feel the need to make like a blinky one or one that sits still. See it blink? That's pretty cool. I'm going to set mine back to bounce, though. And if you want to change like the actual picture, that would be here in texture. All right, so that's all well and good, but right now nobody's speaking. It's just it's just my little trash script coming up, right? Let's give these to somebody. I'm going to click character. No character open, create, or double click one in the file system doc. We're going to create a new character. Oh, let's make a folder called characters. New folder. Okay. Hello. Caps lock on. Character. And I'm going to name her Cleo. Full disclosure, I used a random name generator to come up with all of the names in this course. I don't like know anybody named Cleo. Okay. Hold tight. I'm going to take you to the internet real quick. So I'm going to have this linked in the description. I went on itch.io and I found some free um, visual novel assets. I didn't love them. I kind of don't want to draw a bunch of stuff for this course. So I went on Pit Crew and I found a Pit Crew that, let me see if I can get this up because it's actually kind of important. There we go. I found them that allows for non-commercial and commercial use. I picked one that says commercial because I'm not going to sell my visual novel, but there's a non-zero chance I might make 50 cents on this YouTube series at some point. So I decided to be super safe and pick one that said it was okay for commercial use. You make sure and go through that. You make sure and go through, I mean, what's your aim? Are you just wanting to release something free to practice on? That would be non-commercial use. Are you wanting to sell it? That would be something that would require commercial use. Be smart about it when you go through and use a pick crew. If you're going to use pick crew for portraits like I did. I've also, I'm also going to leave the pictures that I made in the assets that go with this course. So you can just download my pictures and they're fine for commercial use. So, all right, hold tight. Let's go back. In my assets folder, I have snuck in two Clio portraits. Let's use the main one. Well, actually, let's set Cleo up first as a character. First of all, make sure that it says the display name correctly. Then let's give her a portrait. It'll say new portrait. I'm going to just say neutral. Because this is how you do facial expressions. And I'm going to drag Cleo in. And there she is, looking real neutral. Under portraits, where it says default, I'm going to select neutral as the default. So. If I'm going through in the timeline and I kind of forget to specify one, it'll show this face. Oop, let's go back to the timeline. So you'd think, I've made this mistake, that you can just set the character and then play timeline and all will be well. The name comes up, but Cleo doesn't come up. What you have to do, see where it says character? To click that, I'm going to drag this to the very tippy top. Join, and it wants to know what character is joining the conversation. Don't worry about all this other stuff, just as long as it says Cleo, we are good. Play timeline. Well, she's enormous. Let's go back to character to our portrait. Anything that's done over here is going to apply to all of Cleo's portraits. Through my testing, I kind of liked putting her portrait at like 50%. And then remember in game dev, negative Y is up. So I found that moving her portrait up 
negative 200 really got us somewhere. I clicked that little square and it'll preview it for me. That's what it's doing. Let me make it make it a little bit more sense. Come over to timeline, play timeline, and now Leo should pop up and give her lines. If I had a full body portrait, it might make more sense to leave her down at zero, but as is, I think this is fine. One last thing, and then I'll probably like leave it alone. See the name label? Like when it comes up. It's black. It looks like the old text box. That's fine. You can leave it. I'm reasonably sure we can do the same thing. So what were the old settings? No global color, custom set to white. No global color, custom set to white. Best style. Well, you know, I'm actually... Maybe going to put it back as it was. Do I need to have that set to black? Yeah, I think that's going to be fine for this tutorial just because it's a little bit more readable. But if you want to change that, there's your directions. And I highly suspect, do you see box offset? You see how it's like inside the box right now? I am not changing that very much, am I? Just by clicking. Let's put it up by 20. Let's see what that looks like. Yeah, you can make it set up. I might, I think I'm going to change it to 10. Let's look at, see what that looks like. Make it 10. What does negative 5 look like? I know I want it up, but I don't want it that up. Okay, that's not bad. I might leave it there. I tell you what, we are going to cut here. Um, Next time, we're going to add more characters and maybe get rid of this gray. I will see you next time. You have an excellent one. Hey, real quick before you scoot, I am on buymeacoffee.com. It's kind of like Ko-Fi and Patreon together. If you found this video helpful or useful, I would appreciate you coming over here and checking this out. If you are willing or able, you can donate on this page.